Back inside with Alex Avila, Matt Vaskersian, and uh, when you spent 13 years as a big league catcher, you probably think you've seen everything, right? Yeah, sometimes, then you get surprised a little bit. How many broken fingers, by the way? None, actually. Never had a broken finger. Never had a broken finger. I've been close and some broken nails, but no broken <laughs> finger. We're calling this catch-all because <laughs> there are some plays at the catcher position this week that Alex has seen that he wants to bring to you with his perspective. And let's roll Jose Ramirez yesterday stealing home plate I mean look Chapman's been run on all year this looked like easy pickings this is a nightmare scenario for a catcher actually with the guy on third base obviously extra innings tie game you have a guy on the mound that is really slow really hard to even you know control the running game with Chapman on the mound but obviously his back has turned him Ramirez is always an aggressive base runner there's not much you can do here as a catcher just hope that the pitcher gets the ball to you quick enough to be able to make the play I actually I never had anybody try to steal home while I was catching during my career so I never had to experience that but I remember actually seeing that live and I was my mind was blown because that's the type of player Ramirez is and it was I mean amazing to see you see the early release you see Ramirez go you yeah. know he's got a chance because of Chapman being so slow and you're thinking what are you afraid for Sal Perez's life there or what a little bit but at that <laughs> I mean at that point I think you know him and has no like sees him out of the corner of his eye he's not going to swing the bat there or anything like yeah. that but as a catcher like that's something like I'm sure Perez was already thinking about with Ramirez on third with Chapman on the mound that that was a possibility because Ramirez is an aggressive base runner Chapman's really slow and he's got his back turned to him there's not much you can do there aside from Chapman you know being a little bit quicker to the plate you know and, and, and as a catcher you're just doing what you can and and Salvador did an awesome job there actually and probably would have gotten him out if it wasn't for Ramirez's athleticism and the amazing slide that he had. Yeah, here's uh, here's another catcher's nightmare play that you've picked out for us. And I, we could have called this catcher's nightmares. Uh, this is the cross up that goes bad on Wednesday. This is tough with the Rays. He, oh, oh, Mejia just gets smoked there on a cross up like this. This is the one thing that like it, it's still it's crazy to me that actually this happens still a little bit now. But uh, with the pitch calm and everything. Before, obviously, when you had to have multiple signs for the guy on second base is much more prevalent. Uh, and there were times, like in my career too, like you know, I remember <laughs> getting in arguments with 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 Verlander or Scherzer, where you know we have you know we're trying to get on the same page. And there's been a couple times I would get crossed up, and at the end of it, going into the dugout, I'd be arguing with with like let's say if it was Justin, be arguing. I know you 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 messed up on that one. He'd tell me no, you messed up, and we'd go to the tape and place bets on who messed up uh, uh, on the, on that particular pitch. But I had one particular one that reminded me of that play right there, uh, Mejia getting hit in the chest. I just started catching in college. We're, in, we're on a field somewhere in Texas. I can't remember even who we're playing. But there's a guy on first base, two strikes. The pitcher throws the ball, but he ends up, he didn't see the sign right. Hits me square in the chest, because I think it was supposed to be a, a breaking ball, and he threw a fastball. And the umpire called it strike three, and I didn't even catch it. It hit me square in the chest, <laughs> it went straight down, and I just picked the ball up, threw it back to him, and the, the batter went back home uh, into the dugout. But, I mean, that's, that's a nightmare scenario for you, the th Those are plays where a catcher doesn't look as athletic no. as he actually no. is, like, what right? What the heck is that guy doing? JT Romuto is an amazing athlete. We know about his pedigree, uh, championship wrestling family. <laughs> and here's JT with a shovel toss. Got him. No, th this is a, an extremely difficult play for a catcher. A lot of times you see this play with a catcher where the ball is a little bit closer to home plate. So he's, he's picking it up and throwing it on the run. When you're Rio Muto there, you're, you're getting to the ball. You're too close to throw the ball, and you got to be able to underhand it with enough force to be able to get the runner still. Only an athletic catcher makes this play because the ball is too far from home plate for most guys it's worth looking to actually make a play on it. A lot, of times, a lot of times, most catchers, the pitcher's having to make that play because you're not getting out there quick enough. But yeah, first uh, a quick step out of, out of the box, out of the crouch, and, I mean, that's just an incredibly athletic play by one of the best catchers in baseball right, right now incredibly athletic catcher yeah, yeah for sure like I mean I wouldn't have made that play there's a lot of guys that wouldn't make that play so if Kieber Ruiz on Wednesday is trying to score on you and you're watching this <laughs> act ball in the corner this happened Wednesday in Seattle this is as athletic as Kieber Ruiz is going to get and this was what? actually really good I mean Murphy takes away his lane after receiving the ball he's got nowhere to go so he is called out. And he's called out for going out of the baseline. Right. What do you what do you think? You agree with that or not? No, I've never seen this ever called. 
in the amount of time, not only in my playing time, but even just like what, being a fan, it's amazing how he got back to the plate. But I've never seen this called. I was if I was Davey too, I would have gotten ran too, because that's like Kiebert did everything he could to, to, to score there. I didn't. Th I've never seen that. And technically, you see guys though, getting around it. though, it's got to be a line to the base you're trying to achieve, and he went around the left-handed batter's box. He, he had his line, but then the catcher took it away. Like, what is it? At that point, though, that that is that is a situation. Put that where up you again, guys. That's, that's, I want to watch that again because it's just you know. I mean, you could cue up some like 1920s corn organ music and make it even more fun. You, you, we've seen base runners do this all the time to try to avoid the tag and get around the catcher. That's also a situation too where like. You know, at, at that point, once the catcher catches the ball, he's kind of free game there. Like, Kibu could have gone into him. But we see this all the time, guys trying to avoid the tag. There's, to me, I've never seen this called. And I was, I was shocked, actually, by it. I thought, you know, it was a, it was a really good play by Kibu to, to avoid the tag. And I thought he should have been safe. That's, <laughs> That's good stuff, though. Get him, Dave. A uh, little slide of hand, yeah.